Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the score was 123-103. The Lakers got the victory at home. And uh, it was the Toronto Raptors that we faced. And it was the Ra Toronto Raptors that we sent home. I like that. I like how that went. 236 point second half quarters in a row to mirror their 31 point second half quarters in the last game. If anybody's following me, they really controlled the, the first matchup against them last week. Um, even though we were able to get the victory anyway because we had picked up a big lead to start that game. We ended up giving almost the entire lead back in that one, and they had a huge second half. Where we came back and matched them with a huge second half on our end. And um, it was a great, man. Miss Triple Dub, two nights in a row for LeBron James, man. I'm giving him the game ball early. Y'all got to know he's getting it early. 19.16 assists for 10 rebounds. Uh, just really took over the game in the second half when we absolutely needed him to anthony davis 22.6 assists i believe it was 22 points but he had to go out of the game on a spectacular block where Jakob pertle um hit him in the face i guess it was inadvertent it seemed inadvertent um and ad did not return he got hit in the eye pretty bad <laughs> i'm not sure what it's going to look like going forward remember we had the eye issues with ad last year where he had to exit games um twice in a row for getting hit in the eye and, and you know this is yet another one of them situations i know he's frustrated but as i said last year if you ain't gonna wear them glasses uh you know this is how it goes man i don't know why people refuse to wear glasses i guess they too good to wear them but this is what you know the basketball gods go keep on teaching them why they, why they need to wear them it's just like the mouth gear you know what i mean if you ain't gonna wear mouth gear then if you lose a tooth, don't be surprised. Well, when it comes to getting hit in the eye, you get hit in the eye three times and you still don't want to wear glasses and just prepare for the fourth one. It's definitely coming. <laughs> so that's how that went. Uh, Austin Reeves, fantastic, 27 points. Six assists, I believe it was. Uh, but he was great. Ten from field goals uh, made. I think he was 10 of 17, I believe it was. Three out of nine from the three. Uh, D'Lo had like 15 points off the bench, I believe it was. Also 3-9 and nine from 3. So, you know, the 3 ball wasn't exactly efficient, but they hit him when they needed to. And uh, got some big big points from those two uh, to really help us. I thought that um, this was a good Jackson Hayes game. 12 points. I said earlier that I wanted him to have a big game, but I forgot he had four blocks in the last one. <laughs> he had been playing pretty good, um, and, and I, I missed spoke i guess you could say or didn't realize it that he had played as well as he had but he did step in and have an even bigger game scoring the ball tonight so we like what we saw from jackson hayes uh, he picked it up pretty good in the second half as well when ad went down um and you know what's funny because we couldn't seem to get a board when ad was out there i mean <laughs> he walked away with like six of them guys were just rebounding over us like crazy the toronto raptors was controlling the game it seemed like what needed to happen, and this is going to sound funny, but it, what needed to happen was AD needed to be removed from the game. <laughs> and that's when we started taking over. He was like a minus six, and everybody else was a plus something. So it's weird how that went, but the reality was guys just started shifting into doing what was necessary to help the team win that they were letting AD take care of by himself. And that's really what it really came down to. It was almost guys like guys were like, all right, AD's out, so let's 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 crash the glass, let's value more possessions, let's be more physical, as to where they weren't doing those things while AD was on the floor, and, and it's kind of like that's that's really what told the story. Bron just kind of shifted into alpha mode, and it was a better strategy for beating this team tonight. That's what it seemed like to me. I don't doubt that if we would have continued having AD out there, he would have got his numbers. But I don't know that we actually win this game based on how things were going before he set out. It just It's just how the game was adjusted to that ultimately made it so that we were doing the things necessary to beat this team tonight. So I, I really like how guys stepped up. Um, even Gabe Vincent, man, Cardi G, he, he really had a nice game. Still five points, one steal, one rebound or something like that. But it was more quality play you didn't see him just jogging back and forth not being a part of the action he was forcing guys into some tough spots defensively getting stops diving on the floor you know he, his game was more impactful and and you know your stats don't always tell the story but i'm telling you those games that we were complaining about he wasn't impactful at all tonight his impact was felt on the floor 
wasn't a perfect game, but it was a far cry from all the stuff we've been complaining about. So I was very happy to see that. Uh, Cam Reddish, good game tonight. I don't remember exactly what his stats were, but I believe he was in double figures. I think he got like 11 points, uh, and his defense was strong. He also did a lot of the things that helped make life hard on the Raptors defensively. I think our team as a total had like nine steals or something like that, which is a far cry from what we had in the last game, which was one single steal against the Philadelphia 76ers. This is where we really stepped up and, and, and took the ball away from that team that forced uh, – I don't know exactly how many turnovers were forced, but we ultimately were able to receive 18 of them from the Toronto Raptors one way or another, and we only gave up five ourselves, so that was really big. We did lose the glass battle, uh, 40-33, to 33, but we closed the gap quite a bit in the second half by crashing the glass a bit more. Credit to Braun uh, a lot for, for that, uh, and others, of course, who were, were doing the job as well. Uh, Dalton Connect hit a three tonight, hit a mid-range jumper, so hopefully he's snapping out of that slump he's been in. It's been ugly, but this is one of the better games that he's played since falling into that slump, so we're hopeful. Um, Max didn't play until the end of the game, but he did hit a three before the buzzer ended, so I guess we could take that as a positive sign. Um, Rui was awful. Rui was the weak link tonight. He was bad. Two of ten from the field, four boards. One of the problems I had was we were not you know, ac accumulating any rebounds. Part of the problem was because Rui wasn't getting any of them. So I, I thought he was especially uh, inept out there tonight and has taken many steps back from how he started the season. Um, he just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Rui. I honestly don't. But I can tell you this. Uh, we were able to overcome his bad play tonight to get the victory. And if, if other guys weren't playing well, we would have had a really, really bad loss there. And big part of it was because he wasn't winning his matchup. You know, and, and that's something that needs to be said. Give Toronto their credit. They had, what, six players in double figures? Most of them over 12, over 12 and 13 points. Um, but as I said in, in my video today, my Laker chat video, that uh, what I thought needed to happen was they needed quickly to overshoot and be inefficient, taking shots away from other highly – uh, surging players right now. And that's exactly what we saw. He was like 4 of 19 or something like that. And you got Agbaji barely missed. Grady Dick was playing well. Uh, RJ Barrett had it going. Pirtle was spectacular, but quickly needed his looks. And that is what helped the Lakers. The inefficiency there really, really helped. So it, it was exactly what I was hoping would happen. Exactly what I said I thought needed to happen. And, um, you know, you, it's, it's just one of those situations where you don't—you just have to shrug your shoulders uh, as the opponent looking at the situation. You say, well, we'll take it. You know what I mean? You try to incorporate a guy back into the game, but the guy is a high-volume scorer. And what you have going on for the Raptors is a bunch of other guys breaking out at the same time. The last thing you need is that high-volume scorer coming in, taking away from the looks that those other guys who've been scoring 30 a night have been giving you. And as I said, you know, between Davion Mitchell, Grady, and... Um, uh, uh, Agbaji, they had all been breaking out at the same time. The last thing they needed is quickly coming back in there, jacking up shots and bricking all of them. Uh, and, and so it, it played right into our hands. It really did. That inefficiency was really key in helping us um, overcome our own woes, our rebounding woes, and the AD getting out the game and all that stuff. So, you know, it, it's, it's big. It's big when the other team's scoring. Uh, excuse me, pushing off 18 turnovers and you're only uh, lo losing five. I think that helps a lot, especially when you're getting beat on the glass. And so, um, and, and another key for this game that I thought uh, that I pointed out earlier in my pregame video that ultimately played itself out, as I said, whoever attempted more threes would likely pro win the game. And we did. 37 threes attempted to their 29, although we only hit 12 of them and they hit 10. I still thought the three-point volume was going to be the difference tonight because both of these teams attack in the paint a lot. And the last time the Toronto Raptors won a game, they shot the three ball well with more shots attempted. So it's like if they ain't, they ain't figured out they need to shoot more threes in order for them to be successful. As long as they continue to be an interior scoring team, they're going to keep on losing. And that's exactly what happened. They, they continued that path, and we got the victory. You know what I mean? They, the coach is going to figure it out one of these days that they have better three-point shooters than he's allowing them to shoot. They need to be shooting more. But um, 
you know, they do something with Jakob Perto, man. This dude hit Braun and AD in the face tonight, almost knocked them both out the game. I don't know if I should look into that in any kind of way. I did feel a bit upset about it, though. I'll tell you that. I don't know if if I'm, it's fair to, to be angry about it. Maybe they were inadvertent. But uh, I just thought it was mighty convenient that how the same guy hit both of those people in the face tonight. I didn't like it. However that played out, I didn't like how that went. Uh, Chris Boucher needs to be given credit. He looked really good out there, man. That's a trade target for somebody, maybe even us, to be honest with you. I really like what I saw from him shooting the ball. Just a long player that can really do a lot of different things. And he's he's developing very well right now. So I, I like what I'm seeing out of Chris Boucher uh, for the Raptors. And, uh, yeah, man, it was just a great opportunity for the Lakers to take advantage of a team that turned the ball over far too much and are trying to incorporate somebody who just takes far too many shots for his inefficiency. And, you know, I was loving it. I, I love what I saw from us, man. When AD stepped out, Braun took over and let his light shine in a, in a bright way. Um, and Austin Reeves, man, the behind-the-back pass that he had earlier, it was spectacular. He had a spin move followed by a behind-the-back pass to Cam Reddish, dunked the ball. I thought that was one of the better highlights of our entire season, one that we're definitely going to be seeing in highlight reels when people talk about the Lakers this season. This was That was one of the flashiest plays we've had. Anthony Davis blocking the shot on Jakob Pertl where he got hurt. I thought that was a spectacular block. Um, it was a couple highlights. Jackson Hayes had a nice block early in the game. Anthony Davis had another weak side block on Akbaji that I thought was spectacular. It was just a really, really nice night for highlights. And, uh, you know, Anthony Davis had a hammer dunk earlier on as well that I thought was pretty spectacular. So it, it, they had a lot of game highlights tonight that stood out for me. I really, really look forward to seeing the highlights from this particular matchup for the Lakers side of things. And, um, yeah, man. You know, it, this is just one of those wins where you took care of business. You remembered what the team just did to you. You understood at half that you had some disadvantages going on. And you had allowed that team to control the first half of the game with the glass and, and, and had a, a nice little, you know, deficit to try to overcome. But you had cut it to two. When the, when the third quarter started, they quickly spread the thing back out to ten. And we kept fighting. We kept fighting. We let our defense do a lot of the talking out there. Uh, I thought we were attacking the basket pretty well, getting to the line pretty well. And uh, it was a physical game tonight. Blood on the jersey type of game. You know, guys, <laughs> you look at Braun's jersey, it was blood drops all over it. AD's jersey, blood drops all over it. Like, guys were really fighting and battling. And, um, you know, you like what you saw, man. A lot of good foot speed down there from our defensive end between uh, – you know, every, really, honestly, Cardi G and, and, and Gabe Vincent, I mean, excuse me, and, uh, and, and and Cam Reddish really provided a lot defensively out there that we hadn't been seeing, staying in front of people who were fast afoot. And that's that's what's been missing out there. So I really like the effort from both of those guys uh, defensively tonight. And you know I've been complaining about Gabe Vincent, but tonight was a night where I can legitimately say he brought what we needed. And, um, you know, got to give him credit. So, yeah, man. Love what I saw there, man. We beat a good Raptor team. They're only going to get better as they start to getting guys back. Lord knows they're missing half of their damn starting lineup. You know, I couldn't tell you how irritated I was watching uh, <laughs> Scotty Barnes clapping over there in the corner and Bruce Brown in his cowboy outfit. I mean, I, if I don't see the Raptors again, it'll be too soon. Like, <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not a particular fan of seeing the same team over and over again. That's really what it comes down to for me. Uh, we've seen the Suns already twice. What four times actually? When you consider the preseason, we've seen the Raptors already. Got rid of the season series with them. Uh, we're seeing Memphis again tomorrow after seeing them last week. It, you know, I'm just not a fan of that style of scheduling. I don't need to see the same teams over and over again. Spread that out some, man. That's what I would ask the schedule makers to do. Because right now, we, we're just continuing to see the same teams over and over again. And and while that can be good for learning these teams, it's not so good when considering that because of it, you got that same repetitive thing happening throughout the course of the season. So we're going to see an entirely different set of new teams that we're going to see over and over again for about three weeks. So I, I just I'm not a fan of that. 
I'm not a fan of that type of scheduling. I don't think I've seen it before, and I hope this is the last time they do it. But uh, the Raptors are done. We don't have to see them again for the rest of the season. Um, that's good, man. That's really good. Got that out the way. Won the season series with them 2-0. And those were two hard-fought fought, hard fought games. We were able to avoid having to face Scotty Barnes in either one of them, Bruce Brown in either one of them. Uh, and that's, that's a big deal when you consider how talented those guys can be when they're fully healthy. Um, so, yeah, man. I, done with them in the first 12 games of the season. And now we move on to the Memphis Grizzlies who beat the Portland Trail Blazers by like 40 points tonight. And uh, no John Morant. I don't believe y'all will be available for that one. I think he's he's going to be week to week at this point. So we will get a chance to avoid him. But that doesn't mean they still aren't going to play at a high level. But, you know, the Lakers are winning games at home. That's what it really comes down to. You come into our building and you're facing a different team. And uh, I expect for us to come out with a lot of energy. Got to check and see how AD's doing, if he's going to wear goggles, if he's going to miss this game. We don't know how serious that eye injury could potentially be. Uh, looking at Scotty Barnes with the eye injury, he had a whole blood vessel popped in his eyeball. So we ain't going to see him for weeks. That's what came to mind when AD got hit. It's like, yo, sometimes these, these facial injuries, depending on how bad they are, they can keep you out for weeks. So I'm really hopeful that we don't get terrible news in regards to that. Of course, with Scotty, he has a uh, broken uh, facial bones and stuff like that so it's a lot going on with Scotty Barnes but just the same AD went out and was in a, a, a whole lot of pain in regards to that that face so we will see what comes of that but uh, all in all I thought we were great man Austin Reeves seems to be given so much credit for how, how rep repetitive he was at driving to the rim and getting and ones layups off the glass I mean he, he did it so many times in that second half he had to have had 20 points in the second half uh, just really spectacular stuff taking over that basketball game. Him and Braun, when 80s, you know, had to leave the game, they just immediately stepped into um, exactly what we needed them to. And, and that's the story of the game for me, man. It's just how quickly those players adjusted to the absence of AD in doing exactly what needed to be done to make up for what was ultimately not being done. And so that was really good stuff, man. I don't know if I can give credit to the coaches or the players or both. I'm not really sure, but whoever's, you know, came up with the the, 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 the notion that, that things needed to be done differently once AD stepped out really needs to be given the credit. Maybe it was Braun just in general, but I love how we, how we adjust it. In-game adjustments are often talked about. I thought this was one of the better games for in-game adjustments that I had seen, man. Uh, we, we, we knew what we needed to do and we handled business. We needed to crash the glass hard in the second half. We did that. We needed to continue getting to the line, scoring in the paint. We did that. We needed to hit good shots. I thought the ball movement was better. Defense was better. Uh, just, a, just a better overall effort from the Lakers. Granted, we were going up against a, a not so good team, but they were playing well. You know what I mean? And that's, that's really what it is. So, yeah, man, we take care of the ones we're supposed to take care of. This was one of those for sure. I was worried about this game, but I thought we reacted well to what was going wrong out there. And uh, that's how the Lakers roll at home. That's how we won the first three games. Things were going wrong. We still found a way to win. And uh, as long as the game is in our building, that seems to be our M.O. Now, the moment we get on the road, things go wrong. We go wrong with them. But if the game's in our house, uh, we find a way to win. And so that's that's the story of the Lakers thus far, and I'm extremely pleased with that. So, yeah, that's that's really what my reaction is to this basketball game. Everybody go check out the highlights, man. It was a lot of fun to watch there, I'm telling you. BDL44, I thank you all for watching. I'm out.